Well, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. I'm your host, Chris Green, Director of Network Expansion for Avoya Travel. Thank you so much for your time today, for tuning in. We're excited about our program. We hope you are as well, and we certainly hope you learned something today. Or maybe you're inspired by something, but the end net result is you spend more time investigating the elite best-in-class resources offered by Avoya Travel, and then get in touch with a specialist to learn more. And of course, all of that starts at avoyanetwork.com. Like I said, I think we've got a great show. And we have breaking news concerning the travel agent education powered by Avoya platform, but you're going to have to wait a few minutes for that exciting information. We do have a wonderful guest joining us today as we focus our attention on strategic partnerships with Miguel Cardillo, strategic partnership specialist for Avoya Travel. Miguel is going to join us for an exclusive Meet the Team segment. Miguel is in the trenches. He's working daily with some of our industry's biggest suppliers and working to give the Avoya Network even more opportunities to do what they do best. Sell, sell, sell. And we can't wait to share Miguel's story and find out more about his role with Avoya Travel. Miguel will join us here in just a few minutes. We'll also have our Eye on the Industry segment today, and some of the stories we are following include an update on the devastating wildfires in West Maui and the continued impact, certainly on the travel sec uh, sector. We'll also have the latest on Brightline and its newest high-speed train offering out of Orlando as that service date has been unveiled for the first time for trains to roll. Um, but uh, we're excited to provide all of those details. And finally, it's time to play the family feud, or at least it will be on a large percentage of Carnival cruise ships coming soon. We'll have all of those details all coming up here in a minute when we take a look at our industry insights. Like always, we'll wrap up the show with a discussion on next week's big guests, touch base on promotions, travel agent education powered by Avoy, and of course that breaking news that I promised, resources available exclusively to the Avoya network, social media contacts, including a new way for you to stay in touch, and all the ways that you can reach out and start the process to affiliate with Avoya Travel. So let's kick it off this week's episode of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update with some industry insights and our eye on the industry feature. Uh, we want to thank our friends from Travel Weekly, where we sourced all of the stories for this week's On Deck with Avoya. We appreciate that great resource. On Thursday, I think this actually happened last week. Professors and researchers at the Economic Research Organization at the University of Hawaii released a lengthy special report addressing the Maui wildfires and the economic road that lies ahead. The report summarizes all the recovery issues, including tourism, housing, health, and education as the groups work to dive deeper into these issues for months to come. Now, we're going to focus on the impact on tourism, of course, and that's been just a huge aspect. The report went on to say that it could take years for visitor numbers to return to where they were before the fires and calls for a specialized marketing campaign for Maui to happen right now. Now, since the devastating fires, the number of visitors to Maui has dropped by about three quarters, impacting businesses, impacting employees all over Maui, not just West Maui, where the fires primarily happen, with about $270 daily spending per visitor to Maui. When you add it all up, the loss of revenue adds up to more than $13 million per day. The loss of homes and businesses in Lahaina are immense. Among the destroyed buildings were visitor accommodations and short-term vacation rentals that provide roughly 1,500 rooms. These rooms normally accommodate about 4,000 tourists the report states that businesses in Lahaina generated more than $70 million per month in revenue and accommodation, food services, retail sales, all other categories, and they employed about 8,500 individuals. These economic impacts are not just confined to Lahaina, but also to other parts of West Maui, which is closed to visitors. The town of Lahaina, Kanapali, Kapalua, Napili supply more than 10,000 hotel rooms, timeshares, vacation rentals. Fires in the upcountry Maui also destroyed structures and damaged agriculture land. That impact to the economy is just strong. And like a chain reaction, the decreased tourism spending impacts the hotels, tours, their employees, and other local businesses. The report said they expect a rate of unemployment to jump as high as 10% in the coming months before visitor spending returns. The transient accommodation tax revenue was also expected to be down 
about $5 million per month, and that's going to impact the county of Maui as a whole. Such a sad story, such a beautiful part of the world. All of us are hoping for their recovery, and we'll continue to follow this story until Maui is back to full speed. Brightline, who owners include Sitaris, who also has an ownership stake in Avoya Travel, will begin train service to Orlando International Airport beginning September 22nd. The high-speed rail line will connect Orlando with South Florida stops, including Miami, Aventura, Fort Lauderdale, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach. Opening Orlando fulfills our ultimate business model. According to Patrick Goddard, the president of Brightline, we have seen incredible enthusiasm from the business and tourism industries eager to travel between Central and South Florida. Now, ahead of the launch, Brightline is offering promotional fares for its smart service on trains at stations. Smart service offers a business class option with leather seats, complimentary Starlink Wi-Fi, multiple power and USB outlets, and an array of food and beverages available for purchase. Smart fares are $79 for adults, $39 for children for a limited time, Groups of four or more will automatically save an additional 25%. And I personally think this is very exciting and is only going to benefit the travel industry as now you can link all of those amazing tourist attractions, Disney World, Universal, Sea World, all of the cool things in Orlando with the two biggest cruise ports in Florida, which are in Miami and Fort Lauderdale, respectively. And finally, are you ready to play the family feud? Well, if so, Carnival Cruise Line might be your offering because its Family Feud live game show uh, will be on 13 ships by the fall of 2024. Now, Carnival introduced Family Feud Live back in 2021 on the Mardi Gras, followed by the Carnival Celebration in 2022. Now, through an exclusive partnership with Fremantle, Carnival hosts a live version of the game show. Guests compete in a format similar to the TV program, two five-person teams, which audition in advance, compete on stage to guess the most popular answers to questions posed in a survey of 100 people. The rollout will expand the program to more than half of the line ships. The next Carnival ships to have the Family Feud Live will be the Carnival Legend that premieres here in a couple of weeks on the 30th of this month. Next month, it's the Carnival Pride, and then in December, the Carnival Miracle, and finally, the inaugural sailing of the Carnival Jubilee on the 23rd of December will also include the Family Feud. All right, time to turn our attention to this week's Q&A segment as we welcome a new guest to our program, but certainly not a new topic for us here at On Deck with Avoya, we know how vital relationships are, especially in the travel industry, and we're excited to shine the spotlight on that resource yet again. So please help me welcome our Meet the Team featured guest this week, Miguel Cardillo, Strategic Partnership Specialist for Avoya Travel to On Deck with Avoya. Miguel, so great to have you on the show, my friend. Excuse me, thank you, Chris. Very happy to be here. Great to have you. Miguel, before we get started, tell me a little bit about your background as an individual and how you ended up working with the strategic partnership team at Avoya Travel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before I talk about myself, really, I have to talk about my mom. Um, so my mom was born in Mexico. She was an immigrant who eventually became a U.S. citizen. She was born in Mexicali, Baja, California. Um, and she really lived the American dream and, and provided me with opportunities as a child, as a kid that she didn't experience in her upbringing. She worked at a very, very um, young age. Um, and just like many of in her situation, being born in Baja California, really didn't have any sort of formal education past elementary school. Uh, but luckily, she was able uh, to come to the United States and start her own, her own business. Um, but I was born in East Los Angeles. Uh, to parents who weren't ready to raise a child. Um, so fortunately, I was adopted by my godmother um, and who eventually became my mother. So when I speak of my mom, um, she is my mom, uh, but I am adopted and she was my godmother at first. Um, but as I said, she provided me with opportunities that um, she didn't have as a kid and, and really who knows where my life would have been if, if I was never adopted. So she moved my sister and I out of Los Angeles to San Diego, California, where eventually she opened up her very own business. It was a beauty salon and a barber shop, um, and she was one of the most hardest workers and the most determined person I've ever known. She actually inspired me to work in business, and I always knew I wanted to follow in her footsteps. I just didn't want to be a barber. I just didn't want to cut hair, if I'm being honest. 
Um, but after high school, which my high school is not too far from the Innovation Center in San Marcos, uh, I eventually worked a series of jobs, took some classes at a community college, interned at a church, and eventually applied to a business development assistant at Avoya Travel, which I didn't think I was qualified for this job at all. Um, but I remember my interviews like it was yesterday. Um, and I remember when Sarah actually called me and confirmed the job offer. And I knew at that moment, it was going to be a great opportunity and the right direction for my career. But looking back, I could have never guessed how big of an impact it would have actually have been. Um, Avoya trusted someone like me, someone with little experience in the travel industry. And from there, through multiple promotions, I am happy to be where I'm at today. Um, very grateful for the opportunity and always looking forward to my continued growth at Avoya Travel. Well, I can't speak for Sarah, but I would guess, Miguel, that that spark that you have, because you do, the first time I had a conversation with you, I remember coming away, wow, this, this is a sharp young man and he's really got a bright okay. future. So I can, I can see why Avoya Travel was, was quick to snap you up and, and make you part of the team. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope I'm not disclosing information that you don't want to share, but one of the things I love to do here on On Deck with Avoya, Miguel, is, is kind of dig into what inspired a person's personal love of travel. Because as you may imagine, so many of us that work for the company, so many of our affiliates, one of the reasons is we just love travel. But for you and your personal story, that love of travel is just something that you're in the beginning stages of finding out about, right? Yeah, yeah, I am a travel newbie. Uh, a lot of people at the office laugh when they hear that I flew for the first time last year for first time in a decade, if not more. But um, I love to share my story. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I never took family vacations as a kid. Uh, since my mom had a small business, we really couldn't afford to take any days off. Um, and any time off we did have, we really spent with our family in Mexico, uh, really giving back to them as much as we could. Or, you know, on the other side of the family where, um, you know, being a part of East Los, growing up in East Los Angeles, uh, visiting family members in, in prison. So a lot of holidays and time off weren't really um, spent the way I wish they were spent. but. Uh, moving to San Diego and really being away from that environment, um, my mom put me into the Boy Scouts, which was my first taste in travel. And I remember I would look forward to camping every year. And as an adult, that's still my preferred method of travel, camping, hiking, exploring, immersing myself in nature. Um, I, I love it. And, and to that extent, Avoya has taken me to the other side of the travel spectrum instead of staying in tents and Leaving in sleeping bags, I'm experiencing, you know, these these five star all inclusive resorts, these these amazing big cruise ships. Um, really, something I've never thought I would ever experience. So uh, to have the opportunity to see and experience the world through a new lens is is an amazing opportunity that Avoya has provided me with. I think for those of us that that have known you and been part of some of these trips that you've taken in the last couple of years. It's neat to be able to experience that through your eyes too, right? I mean, you stayed at <laughs> Caesar's Palace. We were together on the yeah. cruise ship last year for Avoyas National Conference. So I think travel is just inspiring. And, and I get inspired by seeing somebody else really start to develop a love of, of new places and new adventures and all of that. So really congratulations to you on everything that's been going on the last couple of years. I Miguel, tell me a little you. bit about your role as a strategic partnership specialist, the type of vendors that you interact with and how that would have a net benefit for those that are in the Avoyan network. Yeah, absolutely. So as a strategic partner specialist, I am the day-to-day -day contact for many of our great vendors and preferred partners of the Avoyan network. Um, I really oversee uh, tons of aspects of travel from wholesalers to big cruise lines, U.S. river-based cruise lines, guided tours, resort brands, rail. Um, as a travel newbie, I'm in a great spot to learn the ins and outs of all types of travel. So I have no preference of one travel type versus the other. Really from day one, when I came in, I just really wanted to learn and experience it all. Um, you know, the Avoya Network benefits from the strategic planning of the entire partnership team. It's not just myself and the accounts I oversee, but really the entire team from our assistants uh, up to our 
a senior vice president of partnerships, really from developing the sales and network engagement plans, the consumer marketing plan, exclusive offer preparation, SAM opportunities, event sponsorship. Really, we oversee a lot at the partnership team. It's uh, all hands on deck and we do our best to support each other, the network and our vendors. One of the things I like to highlight is how at Avoya Travel as a company, we don't sell to the public. All of the sales under the Avoya Travel name are from those in the Avoya network exclusively. They do all the selling. So having that competitive advantage of being able to close sales is obviously very important for those in our network. So Miguel, my question is this, what advantage in your opinion does our relationships with the industry's top vendors bring to the table when it comes to making it possible for those in our network to, like I said, sell more travel, have an easier time getting the clients to say yes and going on an amazing vacation? Yeah, to answer that question, I really need to share my experience on a recent project we had in the office earlier this year. I believe they were dubbed Project Fishbowl, where the strategic leadership team invited a couple of top IAs into the office so that each department could uh, each department that works with IAs could really have a better understanding of how they work, and in return, the IAs can understand how Avoya works and our workflow. So I am not joking when I say that I was completely shocked to see that some of our top IAs had almost no personal clients. I was I was blown away. They spent their day just claiming and closing Avoya leads. I was very impressed. I think one IA said, "I can just sit on my behind all day and and pick up the phone from Avoya leads and." And that's my business. And to think that they're they're one of our top earners is really impressive. So Avoya's technology is amazing um, through our consumer marketing efforts, our exclusive sales, the scripts, knowledge base. It's nonstop education here at Avoya. And most importantly, the leads that we receive from the vendors are very beneficial. Um, all of these together not only make and create a successful re recipe for the IA's business, but you know, ultimately we're making their clients during vacation come true. At the end of the day, the clients are getting a great deal on the booking. The IAs are receiving a great commission and Avoya's business is growing. So in return, these vendors want to keep working with us, invest more, and the cycle is going to continue from there. Yeah, we're really fortunate that sometimes they'll say it on the record, sometimes it's off the record, but the vendors will tell you if you have a chance to talk to them individually just how amazing the Avoya Lively program mm -hmm. and how unique our network is. And for those of you that are just watching our show, those Avoya Live leads still make up the majority of sales in the Avoya network. Of course, you can have your own personal clients. You can market as much as you want. Our Marketing Resource Center makes that really possible. Also piggybacking on the great strategic partnerships and the deals that are created there. But those live leads, as Miguel is talking about, just wow. I mean, no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah wow. Miguel, how long have you worked for Avoya Travel? I forgot. I just celebrated uh, four years in June. So in those four years, I've, I've really seen it all. The best of the best of the business uh, back in 2019 and the worst that we had in, in, for COVID in 2020 and um, now seeing that bounce back at present day. Um, I mean, our eyes are crushing it present day. So 2023 is on the books to be one of the best ever. Absolutely. You know, as a follow-up to that, how would you describe in your four years of tenure with Avoya, how would you describe the Avoya culture to you individually and how, how it relates to our relationships with those in the Avoya network? Yeah, Avoya is a family company and, and it shines in how we do business and the culture. Uh, the culture is amazing and I say it all the time and I really mean it, Avoya spoils me. I have many friends, uh, one of them including my boss, my friend, my mentor that I consider, Mickey McBride, as well as when I was first hired, um, you know, my, my, my first boss and my first mentor out of Oya, Sarah Saunders. Um, so in relation to the network, you know, the family aspect of Avoya really shows the most. You would think that in a business where every IA is an independent contractor, it would be cutthroat business trying to make sales. And from what I've seen, that's 100% not the case. Everyone is just so friendly, so helpful willing to help each other, share tips, share, uh, you know, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. Um, I like to say iron sharpens, sharpens iron, and we have a lot of sharp IAs and very helpful IAs in this network. Yeah, I mean, having worked for some big, some of the biggest travel companies in the whole world, having worked for small mom and pop, I can tell you that the Avoya culture is really second to none. And 
It's why I'm proud to say that I'm coming up on my 10 year anniversary as an employee with Avoya Travel. And I certainly wouldn't stick around for a full decade if this place didn't have the special sauce. <laughs> Our special yeah, guest this week is, thank you so much. Our special guest this week is Miguel Cardillo, Strategic Partnership Specialist for Avoya Travel. He's our exclusive Meet the Team featured guest this week for On Deck with Avoya. Miguel, what are you hearing from the vendors as far as their excitement level as we kind of get ready to kick off, you know, quarter four, wow, already of 2023? Great question, Chris. Um, you know, I'm hearing that we can anticipate there to be a huge demand for travel as we end the year and as we look forward to 2024. There's just so much continued optimism for consumers and the booking trends that we're seeing are really reflecting that. Uh, we can really expect 2024 to be a, another great year for our industry. Yeah, I think so too, absolutely. So let's talk about you, the person, when you get a chance to step away from the office. And I, I know music is something that you're very passionate about. <laughs> is that kind of like the main hobby when you're away from Avoya? It's, it's funny that you ask that. So my fiance will always say to me, um, how do you do it all, really? So I, as you say, yeah, music was my first passion. I play a handful of instruments. I really specialize in drums and percussion. This year, I picked up the flute and learned how to play the flute. I haven't learned how to play a new instrument in years. Um, but as for playing drums and percussion, I do play for a local hip hop group here in San Diego, California, where I'm based. We performed many shows, some at the House of Blues, some festivals. Uh, we're currently working on releasing our debut album. So we have one in the works. I just went to the studio this past weekend to record some more songs. Um, and I love our group. When I when I say hip hop, I know there's some negative aspects that people think, but really uh, we're, we are bringing awareness to current issues such as women's rights, immigration, human trafficking. So it's, it's such an honor to play with that group. Um, other than that, uh, on another music aspect, I host monthly sound healing and meditation sessions with my fiance. So she's, a, she's an amazing person. She's currently studying traditional Chinese medicine in the process of obtaining her doctorate in that field. And just to be able to play music and share, you know, those, those uh, wellness and spiritual connections with others just brings us so much joy. Uh, on top of that, I'm also in a, uh, uh, men's soccer league as well. So I, I I try to stay active. Luckily, I'm on camera. Uh, but I, I played last night, I got elbowed and I just have the the worst <laughs> bump right here. So it's, uh, it's what I love to do. Uh, just staying active, hiking, camping, uh, soccer team, and really that soccer team consists of a lot of my uh, childhood high school friends. So it's nice to connect with those guys it's going on 10, 11 years now. You want to you want to name drop the band real quick? <laughs> yeah, so we are uh, the Neighborhood Kids. You can find us on all platforms, um, all social media pages. It's the Neighborhood Kids. That's cool. I'm gonna definitely look that up. Hey, let's circle back for a second on the idea of personal travel. And so far, what's been your biggest takeaway in the travel opportunities that you've had? And how that impacts you as a person? Do you think it's helped you grow? I mean, you sound like somebody who's really focused on personal growth. Does the, the chances for personal travel add to that, Miguel? Absolutely, 100%. Um, like many of us here, I, I've worked 40 hours plus a week on the screen, and, and that's not counting the time you know, outside of here where I'm either on my phone, playing video games, watching something, and so on. So a lot of screen time. Uh, and that being said, I, I love camping. I love the great outdoors. I just love getting away from it all. It's almost forced meditation when you don't have signal service and no one can get a hold of you, uh, but just totally surrounding myself in nature, hiking for hours, exploring peaks, waterfalls, extraordinary natural monuments, um, and so on. I mean, for my birthday recently, uh, I celebrated my birthday by uh, climbing, or not climbing, hiking the Five Peak Challenge here in San Diego. It was about 16 miles. I just spent my whole day doing this. Luckily, my fiance was with me. She, she really told me no one else would want to do this with me. Um, but <laughs> it's just an amazing opportunity. And, and the biggest takeaway from those personal you know, travel journeys in nature is that if I'm missing a loved one, someone that's recently passed away, I can climb to the highest peak and really feel closer to them. If I want to humble myself and get an ego check, I can visit the giant forest in Sequoia, go off to Joshua Tree and 
and really just stargaze and really feel small and and humble myself. But ultimately, it's, it's really connecting with my inner self, really being, you know, being alone, finding a nice view and having nothing but, you know, the sounds and the beautiful sights of nature is, is just amazing. But on top of that, you're excited for the fancy stuff too every now and then again, right? I mean, uh, you have to be excited, like <laughs> the opportunity to sail on Princess to Alaska. That's got to be something yeah. that, that must blow your mind as an opportunity that maybe you didn't see what happened uh, and now it's about to happen for you. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Like I said before, Avoya spoils me. Just to have those opportunities where, where I, when I'm taking my personal trips, it's it's a lot of work to go camping and hiking. I really don't get any rest. So being there, having to work, being blessed to have this opportunity that I, I am getting, I this is a work trip, but ultimately there's so much I can take in, and there's places that never in in all these years I thought I'd be able to go. Currently planning going to Alaska, you know, next weekend. That's that's somewhere I I have always wanted to go, but never thought I'd have the opportunity to go. And it's I'm looking forward to it. I have a lot of sightseeing to do when I'm there. So very excited, very fortunate as well. Well, I'm excited for you. All right, so let's move back into the work stuff before we wrap up today, Miguel. Before we say goodbye, is there anything important from the strategic partnerships team that we haven't covered yet that you think is important to share with our audience today? Absolutely. So I would I would recommend just so those listening, you know, connect with your local BDMs. They're always there to help. Avoy is a growing host agency and representatives are changing frequently. So I would recommend keeping an eye out for any changes in our supply resources page. And if you have any questions, just reach out to myself or anyone else on the team. I had a call earlier this week with a vendor and she let me know that she's there to help you sell and close. If you want to have a small group and get together, she's available um, just like many other vendors are. And if she's not available, they're, they're such big companies that they will send another representative to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's great advice for those that are already in our network. And if you're not in our network, hopefully some of the things you've heard about today and, and the differences that Miguel and, and the team at Strategic Partnerships make will inspire you to want to put in that request and reach out and, and find out more so you can have access to the great BDMs that service the Avoya account. So Miguel, our last question, and, and I, I ask this of everybody, and I love hearing how varied uh, the answers can be to this one, but what would you say is the reason that you would be excited the most about the future of leisure travel? Let's see. I think what excites me the most about uh, the future of leisure travel is how a lot of these major companies, whether it's, you know, especially cruise lines, are shifting being towards being more sustainable and environmentally friendly, whether it's using greener fuels, being carbon neutral, even sourcing local ingredients from vendors at the port that there are, you know, as our guests travel the world, it, we must remember to be, you know, respect these destinations and and really ensure that our grandchildren and their children and so on can experience these destinations the same way we experience when we are long gone. So that, that's really the national park approach to my mindset is re really leaving no, no trace behind and, and letting, you know, generations um, in the future from here it, being able to experience those destinations just as we have. Absolutely. Well said, my friend. Miguel Cardiel, everyone, Strategic Partnership Specialist for Avoya Travel. Miguel, so great to catch up with you. Thank you for that great insight, that wonderful discussion. And I said at the top of the show, I hope people heard something inspiring today. I think your story is pretty inspiring. So all Thank my you. best to you and, and say hi to all my friends in Strategic Partnership for I me. I will. I will. Take care. Thank you, Chris. Absolutely. Next week, just as Avoya Travel's launching its first ever million dollar showcase, we're going to have our good friend from Oceana Cruises, Guillaume Cameron, strategic account manager, back on the show. We're going to get all the new updates on that exciting brand, find out why it's important for Oceana to interact with our top producers, like Guillaume will have a chance to do at the Million Dollar Showcase. And we might even exchange a little trash talking back and forth about our, our favorite sport together, hockey. Uh, we root for different teams, but we're pretty passionate about those. And of course, the new season's about to start. And we can't wait to welcome back Ian Cameron. His uh, last appearance was very well engaged. And so we certainly appreciate that. All right, we made you wait. Hopefully you love that conversation with Miguel. But now let's talk about breaking news. Very exciting. 
The travel agent education powered by Avoya platform is having a flash sale. And we just got word that that promotion is being extended all the way through the end of September, actually until the end of Monday, October 2nd. The price is an amazing $3.99. You see on the screen what a discount that is. Uh, it still includes all the amazing added value. Do not sleep on this special. Once it's gone, I don't know if it's ever coming back. So make sure you get all of those details. The travel agent education powered by Avoya. You can get those details at avoyanetwork.com. And of course, we still have our ongoing promotion for our friends in the military who we're very proud to, to work with. And again, I say it almost every week, what great travel advisors they make, taking $100 off the original affiliation fee. Again, my team is more than happy to get you qualified for that particular promotion. Reach out to us at avoyanetwork.com. There's all sorts of exciting things that are going on, including the resources, right? I mean, we just featured Miguel and, and, and what him and his team do as far as the resources for, for Avoya Travel. Our resources are stacked top to bottom, right? I mean, not just strategic partnerships, but the technology that's available in, in our CRM, our agent power platform, the live leads, which we touched on, our marketing assets that you can find in the Avoya Marketing Resource Center. I could go on, but we got to wrap this show up at some point. But again, reach out, ask your questions, find out the answers. We love telling the Avoya story. And guess what? We've got a new place to tell the Avoya story now. I mean, we're on all the social media channels, but we are now actually uh, on uh, Instagram. That's what it's called. You know the place all those crazy kids are. Uh, I guess I'm just a little old. I've got an Instagram page, but I don't know the last time I checked it. But you should check it out all the time because we're now on Instagram at Avoya Travel Network, of course, on YouTube, where we house all of our shows from the past, on Facebook, where we do our show live on a weekly basis, LinkedIn as well. Again, at Avoya Travel Network on all of the social medias. Great job from Tegan from our uh, trade marketing team for all the hard work she's done on the Instagram page as well. You can always reach out to us the old-fashioned way, right? Just send me an email personally at chris.greenavoyatravel.com or pick up the phone, but I always say, and you really should take my advice on this and start at avoyanetwork.com. It has a wealth of information on our program about the travel agent education powered by Avoya. Some great testimonials you can put in your request. We'll get you connected with an affiliation specialist and boom, here in a couple of weeks, you just might be part of the Avoya Travel Network. Wouldn't that be exciting? Big thank you to our guest today, Miguel Cardillo, for our, that wonderful conversation. Thanks to Annabella from Trade Marketing for doing a great job producing the show as always. Thank you for being part of On Deck with Avoya this week. We'll be back next week with uh, Guy and Cameron from Oceana. We can't wait for that. Until then, take care, my friends.